Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I can't believe it, but it's been over one year since our last shop tour video. Now, a lot has changed. We've got some new machines. We've got a new layout. Our business has changed. We got a whole bunch of different things going on here. So stay tuned and check it out. Okay, so me and my wife run a small business called American Revival Crafts. If you wanna check us out, we're on Instagram, YouTube, of course, and our Etsy page is linked down below as well. But what we do is design and sell laser engraved, CNC, and general wood woodworking products. And we do it all out of this two car garage shop here, which is attached to our house. We also have a craft room inside of our house, which actually used to be our dining room, but now it houses our sublimation printer, heat presses, um, small things like that. We're not gonna cover that room during this shop tour, but maybe it's a separate video later on. The layout of the shop has changed, but the total dimensions obviously remain the same. It's the same as last year. We have about a 20 by 22 foot two car garage, which is attached to our house, like I said, and a small portion of the garage has been partitioned off so that we can use it as a laundry area. But the rest of the shop is used strictly for making craft items. So first let's start at the table saw here. This is the same table saw that I've had for about five years. It is the Grizzly G0690. Uh, it's a three horsepower cabinet saw with an attached router table that I uh, made myself. And it has really been uh, just a great saw. I can't be any happier. I think they've since discontinued this particular model, but if anyone's looking for a used table saw and you see one of these come up on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, definitely jump on it if you're looking for this type of saw. Attached to the table saw, I have an extension wing that I built a router table into. So this table is just two layers of MDF with a laminate top and it houses my Incra router lift and a three horsepower Porter cable router. It has been excellent. I love having this router table attached to the table saw because it saves so much space in here. Although it would be really cool, I think and neat to have a standalone router table. If I had more room, that would definitely be something that I would like, but this is a really, really good compromise. And with the Dust Right by Rockler, router box underneath the table. The dust collection on this is fantastic. I really like having a router table in our shop because of how versatile this piece of equipment is just in this two foot by two and a half foot square with the different router bits that you could put in here, you can do a lot of different work. In front of the table saw, I have a cabinet that I'm using as a storage area and also outfeed support for the table saw. This is just a basic plywood cabinet with plywood top and some drawers, a couple drawers, a couple doors in the front. But I've had this moved around here and there. Um, I really like this spot for it right now because although it is, again, it's if you had more room, it was nice to have, a, I mean, I'd really love to have like a four by eight table, outfeed table in front of my table saw, but it's one of those things that I've kind of tried in the past and I thought I would really like it, but just in this space, I found it really valuable to have more floor space now than I realized in the past. So cutting down the size of the outfeed table has been very beneficial for me to allow room for other activities. I have other tools now that I didn't have in the past mainly being the track saw, which I use to break down sheet goods. And I'm doing that outside. I've taken that whole process of breaking down materials or breaking down sheet goods anyway. And I've taken it outside to my front driveway and a portable bench because I don't do it all the time. But every once in a while when I need to do that, I bring it outside because I'm trying to keep this area in the garage dedicated for tasks that I'm doing often. I mean, if I have, I have limited space in here, so if I'm using the space for something, a, a, a task, I need to make sure that I'm doing that task often enough to justify 
having a space for it, if that makes sense. So one of the things that has had to go since the past few years since I've had this shop is a, a large outfit table. And this is nice because it provides adequate support for the table saw, but it also has a bunch of storage inside of it. Behind my table saw, I have one of the newest machines in the shop, and it is my 80 watt CO2 laser made by Monport. And this has been one of the biggest changes to the shop since our last video and in our business. This has been just the workhorse of our business for laser engraving and laser cutting. Now, the reason I put it here is because it is close to my exterior wall so I can vent outside. And also, I like having it behind the table saw because I can use, with this door down, I have space to rip a eight foot board for in feed and also with out feed because I could just, the garage door is in front of the table saw. So I don't do that very often, but having it in this configuration allows me the opportunity to do that if I need to. Most of the time I'm working on the table saw, it's four feet under or less than I'm ripping boards or I'm cross cutting boards. So it's never an issue having to cut more than that in my particular workflow. So I have a whole series of videos on this CO2 laser. If you're interested, I'll leave a card for them or a link to the videos in the, in the description below. But overall, it's been a fantastic CO2 laser. We've done a lot with this. It's never let us down. We've put a lot, a lot of hours on this so far. Uh, thousands of hours running on this machine and no issues as long as you're maintaining it. I think that's the biggest key with any of these lasers. So couldn't be more happy with this CO2 laser by Monfort. Having this CO2 laser in the shop has just been amazing. It has transformed our business over the past year and we've just been doing so many things with it and we're still figuring out new things that we can do with it that you just can't do with other tools. So Okay, so next to the laser, we have our computer station and wood storage for our quarter inch plywood sheet goods that we use on the laser engraver. We also have a drying rack behind the computer where we store our freshly painted parts that we're working on. Now, this has been a really good setup here. I've recently changed this. I used to have this on a, on a rolling cart, which is great. I've repurposed that for something else, but this just gives me a little more room, a little more uh, area to work the mouse and to sit, and to design and to just run the laser. It also keeps me facing like to the, with the laser to the left of me so I can kind of keep an eye on things as I'm, as it's running and I'm working on the computer. This was an old Grizzly track clamp table that I had before. Uh, I never really used it as, I never really used the T-Track hold downs and stuff on it. So I kind of always just been using it as a utility cart. And again, I added casters to it, so it's mobile. This has been nice to have here. And it doubles as storage for the laser sheet goods. So the last thing in this corner above the laser, I have this wall which separates some cabinets that I have on the laundry or storage area of the garage shop. But up on this wall, I just have a spot to hang my X-Tool D1 diode laser. I don't use that a lot anymore now that I have the CO2 laser, but I do pull down every once in a while if we get really busy. It does a great job with engraving. It's just a little slow, but it, it engraves really nice images. So sometimes we do break that out and use it. Um, I also have kind of some modular shelving here. This is another thing that I'm working on. I've got some ideas to make some maybe pull out cabinets here that I can use to help with our off cut and laser wood storage, but I just haven't gotten around to doing that right now. So it's kind of open still. The, the hard part about it is that it's, because you have the laser, which is about four feet wide, it kind of makes it a little hard to reach the wall. So that's why I was thinking about doing some sort of maybe cabinet that hangs on the wall with some pullouts that are maybe two feet long. So that'll bring the drawers out to about this level. So you'll be able to look to see what you have in there, but we'll see, I'm still kind of working that through. Next to our CO2 laser, we have our air compressor, which is made by California Air Tools. This is really important at this location because we have the air assist 
which has been upgraded from the original CO2 laser air assist connected to this compressor. And this is a good little compressor. It's got decent tank storage for just one laser like this, uh, one laser setup, but it's extremely quiet. I'll turn it on right now and see if the microphone will pick it up, but it's the quietest air compressor I've ever used. So to me, having an air compressor that's quiet is extremely important just because of the amount of time that we're spending in here, the amount of time that this is running while we're using the laser engraver. It's really important to have a quiet, reliable air compressor. So also in this corner, we have our dust collector. Now, this is another change from last year. And some people might think it's a downgrade and maybe it is in some aspects, but or the biggest reason that I went with this machine rather than my old dust collector, which was the Grizzly two horsepower floor model dust collector, which I couldn't recommend any higher. It's an awesome machine. But the reason I went with this Dustrite 650 wall mount is because I can mount it on the wall. So I've taken this and I've run it as high up into or onto the wall as I could, and it clears the area underneath it so that I'm able to put something else there, in this case, the air compressor. This dust collector has been fantastic. It does everything I need it to do because I'm only running one tool at a time. I'm running my planer, my table saw, which doesn't have great dust collection anyway, but it's plenty powerful to run any of those machines. My band saw, my drum sander, it all gets run off of one flex line from this dust collector. And so far it's been working out great. I've had this set up now for about six months and I'm very glad that I made the switch because our shop now has, it's kind of transformed less into general woodworking items and more into laser engraving, CNC work. And I have a separate dust extractor running on my CNC, which we'll get into later. But overall, the size and the space that my old dust collector was taking up, I couldn't justify having in that spot for the amount of real estate that it was taken up. Okay, also in this corner by the table saw, dust extractor, laser engraver, we have some shelving, some cubbies up here for storing of miscellaneous items, our paint stain storage area, and also our clamp rack behind us. Now, this is also, this cutoff storage is what I call it over here for the laser engraver. This is where I keep all of our scraps because you do have a lot of small pieces like this that come off of the machine. And I try not to keep so many of them and I do throw a lot of them out to be recycled, but they're they're helpful to have around so you know I don't want to get rid of them because you know having the laser especially with the camera installed on it you can take a cutoff like this and turn this into a whole lot of names that you cut out or or a bunch of different other things I mean even pieces like this could still be used for small uh, stands we make a lot of these little easel stands so it's always good to have this on hand I'm looking at designing a little bit better of a organization system for it so that we know kind of which ones we're going to keep which ones we don't want to keep and they're kind of organized in a more neat fashion but for right now this is working just two basic shelves so here's our clamp rack setup it's a modular design that i made on the cnc basically these pieces can come off and they're hung on a french cleat so this has been meeting our needs really well right now we have an assortment of parallel clamps pipe clamps and F-style clamps here that get hung up. One of the areas that I spend the most time at in the shop is standing in front of the assembly table. So here I have two Festool MFT tables that I've connected together and they are on a rolling cart. So this is mobile, but this gives me about 60 inches by 45 inches of work area and I spend a lot of time here sanding, putting things together. I also have my dust extractor, my Festool CT26 right next door where I can take my sanders and do my work or track saw, whatnot to break down sheet goods. All that stuff is right here within reach. So this has been pretty efficient. Now, the reason I went with the MFT tables is because I found a lot of versatility in having the MFT table for cross-cutting sheet goods. 
Now, the only limitation that I had with it was the size. Having one would give you about 40, you know, a table that was about 45 inches wide by 28 inches deep. And you can cross cut, I think, 16, 17 inches on that. But when I oriented two together and I have the rail going the other way, I can cross cut a panel that is about that's about 36 inches when I have my fence system set up on here. And I do that often. Without the fence system, I'll take a piece of foam insulation board, I'll throw it on top of this, and I'll do rough cross cuts or rips to break down material, mostly for the laser, because I don't really need those to be accurate. I'll usually just take my Makita 18 volt circular saw and rip those to the size of my bed. Now to convert this from assembly table to a crosscut MFT style table, I have these brackets from Dashboard and they work really nice. They're nice heavy duty aluminum. Um, there's nothing wrong with the Festool brackets. I still have those, but these are a little bit more heavy duty. I like them a little bit better. I like how the rail attaches to them a little bit better. So they've been a nice upgrade, but it's really easy to transform this from this style, just flat table, to the cross-cutting station. So to start, I'm gonna take the front bracket and it just slides onto the T-track on the side of the MFT table. And I'm gonna push this all the way until it hits my stop here. Now I've pre-calibrated those stops when I set this up and tighten them down. So now I know exactly where I need to put this every time. I don't need to measure and there's very little calibration when it comes time to set this up. And the rear is installed the same way. Next thing I do is install the track. And I'm using the 1400 millimeter track for this because I'm going the long way of the MFT table, the original track is meant to go the other direction so it's a shorter track it's a 1080 so this is the 1400 rail that comes with the track saw kit and this just slides on to a bracket on the back rail and it is secured with another knob like so there is also one four millimeter allen that needs to be secured on the back side to make sure everything's tight okay so now that i have my track installed I store my INCRA fence underneath the assembly table and this just attaches to the table with dog holes and dog clamps. Now these dog clamps just go right into the holes in the MFT top, tighten them down. Okay, so now in this orientation I have got 27 inches of crosscut capacity and the setup is perfectly square, and that's because of the precise nature of these MFT holes. This is a pretty common setup that I do, but if I wanted to get even more crosscut capacity out of this, I still have three more sets of dog holes that I could install this fence at, and that would take it to basically a maximum of just about 40 inches. And I usually don't go that much, but for cutting cabinet panels and stuff like that, it's really nice to be able to get in the about 30 to 32 inch range of crosscut capacity. So I find myself using this setup a lot more than my table saw. And the breakdown is just as easy as setting it up. I found it really helpful to store my track saw clamp on the inside of my garage door. I have a couple of these clamps made by FastCap, and more recently I found a comparable item on Amazon, which is a little bit cheaper. But the reason I really like the Amazon ones is because they come in a three pack instead of a two pack uh, that the FastCap uh, edition comes in. So it's been really useful to get these up and out of the way and on the garage door, especially the 3000 millimeter track, but having them up on the garage door just totally gets them out of the way. Okay, so at this point of the video, if you've stuck around, thank you so much for doing so. I really appreciate it. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm putting out here, also please consider subscribing. I appreciate that very much. We're getting really close to creeping up on a thousand subscribers. We're at about 660 right now at the time that I'm making this video, 670. 
So, um, you know, 1,000 has been my goal for this year, for 2023. So we're right there. I think we can do it. If you really like the video, please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified of future videos. Also attached to my MFT assembly table, I have some storage for six inch F clamps. I also have some pullout shelves for sustainers and organizers. I have six banks of drawers for miscellaneous items. There's also storage underneath the tables just to put various things like hammers or my fence for the crosscut system goes underneath there. And also on this side, I have more sustainer pullout storage. So this assembly table has been a really nice addition to the shop. It takes up a good amount of real estate. It really does. Um, but I like how this table is separate from the table saw. In the past, I've used sort of a hybrid table saw, outfeed table slash assembly table, trying to combine them into one unit. But I found that that would get cluttered with table saw parts and it just, you know, so whenever I'd want to use it for uh, a outfield and out feed table, it would be cluttered with stuff. Or if I wanted to use it for an assembly table, it would be cluttered with stuff as well. So having this separate where you could walk around the entire table and work on all four sides of the table is really important. It makes it very versatile. Also, this takes up a lot of space, but it's also doing many different things. Not only is this an assembly table, but it's the crosscut station. It's my sanding station. It's a place that I rip down sheet goods on. So it does a lot of duty. It more than earns its space in the shop. So in the corner of my garage, as I mentioned earlier, is my Festool CT26 dust extractor. And I also have on top of it, the Festool work center and also the Festool Cyclone Separator. Now, all three of these parts come together to form just one station where it does so much. And again, in this real estate that this is taking up, it performs a lot of different duties. Having the Festool Sanders and the paired to the dust extractor has been one of the biggest game changers that I've experienced in this shop to make sanding a lot more of an enjoyable process and also cleaner. The dust extraction on these things is so good and to not have to worry about cleaning up a whole you know mess of dust everywhere after you're sanding for long periods of time is really helpful and having this work center is nice because it has everything in one unit i carry my rotex uh, 150 on here as well because i use that a lot it also has a spot for my domino to be hung right there and I also have some block sanders and various things up here on the top. But having this cart that can be pulled out, I can move this around the shop. I don't have to do it often because most of the time it just lives right here because this is my, my main work center for sanding and using the track saw. But um, having this work center right here just makes this a one-stop shop for all these power tools. And having the cyclone extractor has been really helpful I haven't found it to be too much of a big deal to change the bags and the price of them has come down a lot, especially now that you can get them from other companies like PowerTech. You don't necessarily need to buy the Festool brands and I use the PowerTech ones all the time and they've been great. But not having to change the bag that often with this Cyclone separator has been a nice convenience. So next in this corner of the shop, this used to be my miter saw station, which I've relocated. We'll get to that later. But now in this area, I have my drum sander, and this is the Supermax 1632 drum sander. And I couldn't recommend this machine more. It's just been a workhorse. I haven't been using it as much lately, but it still has a place here. The biggest thing that I use this for is with cutting boards, either mainly end grain boards, but even side grain boards, I will use this a lot. Uh, I was even using this in place of my planer for quite a while before, when I didn't have a planer, um, just to thickness things for the laser, uh, thin quarter inch, 3 16th inch material. It works really well to get that stuff down to thickness for the laser. Okay, so the next thing on this wall, I just have some wall organizers. And these I made on the CNC. They just hold gloves and consumable items like shop rags and my glue station, a couple different uh, 18 volt 
palm routers that I commonly use. One has a chamfer bit in it, one has a round over bit in it. So I could just grab and go with these. Quickly, some screws, drill storage, couple 18 volt nailers and brad nails, some more screws down here. Just stuff that's consumable that I need to grab quickly and have open storage so I can know if something's getting low or not. Up here, I have my router bit cabinet and these are my half inch router bits that I use on the router table. And to the right of that, we have some sandpaper organization. The last thing on this wall that I have is just another one of these cubby systems. And this I just use for some bulk storage, some extra glue, some jigs up on top, household items like paint, and then some small offcuts. I use those offcuts for either the laser engraver or I'll use them for cutting boards. Okay, as we continue to walk down this wall, we have a few more items. So we have a mobile rolling cart for my little drill press. Now, I used to have a Benchtop Delta drill press, and I got rid of it because I didn't really use it that much, and it took up, you know, valuable space for something that I rarely ever used. And lately, I've been needing a small drill press, so I was almost thinking about getting a new version of that Delta Benchtop little drill press. But then I came across this uh, Dremel workstation that I found on Amazon, and it has been perfect for what I need, exactly what I need. I already had this Dremel that I really wasn't using for anything else anymore. So this is really for one specific item that we sell on Etsy. We make a laser engraved uh, wedding dress hanger, and I need to make sure that the hole where the hanger metal hanger portion of it goes into the wood. I need to make sure that's drilled perfectly straight or else the hanger is gonna be a little wonky. So having this little drill press is perfect for that. So next on the list is my bandsaw. This is the uh, 1412 bandsaw by Laguna. So it has 14 inches of resaw capacity. Most of what I use this bandsaw for is resawing, specifically resawing down lumber for the laser. I make a lot of quarter inch material and having offcuts of hardwood or softwood, whatever, having those offcuts is really useful to be able to take those down into something that the laser can cut easily. So that's mostly how I have this set up with a resaw blade, a resaw king blade, which is fantastic by the way. I also have my remote for my dust collector, uh, some hearing protection, a koozie just in case you need it, a couple push sticks here. And um, having it in this spot is perfect for what I need it because working in it, working on this machine in this, in this manner. So this gives me the ability to resaw pieces that are about 28 inches long and most of the time, that's the size or smaller material that I'm putting through here to resaw. If I needed to do something longer, all I need to do is just pull this back and I have another four or so feet that I can do in this location. One upgrade I plan on making in the future is to get a mobile base for this. So that way I can wheel it around a lot easier and get basically unlimited resaw capacity if I just orient it in a, in a different way. But I haven't really had the need to get that yet because I'm, I'm not resawing very long boards. I'm not making, you know, eight foot long things very often, so. Okay, so next to the bandsaw and in the back corner of the garage, we have uh, our CNC. So this is the Shapoko 5 Pro two foot by four foot CNC. I have an entire video just dedicated to this machine uh, right up here. So if you wanna take a look at that, it goes into full detail about everything about this. But what I wanna say about this right now is that I absolutely love it. Having the two foot wide or the depth of two feet by four feet wide here is fantastic because I can put a full four by two sheet of plywood in here and cut out many parts. That's helpful when you're batching out stuff. So up above the CNC, I put these sound deadening panels up against the wall. And I just did those to help kind of deaden some of the sound since these two walls connect to the house. And they've done a pretty good job and they make for a nice little backdrop too. Next thing is dust collection. So coming up from the CNC, I have a fine turbo dust extractor up in the ceiling joists. I used to have my Dustrite 650 dust collector up here, but since I've moved that for my main dust collector, I switched this over to the fine turbo and it's been really good. It's better. Uh, it provides better suction and it is quieter. It's a lot quieter. So I just have that on a remote that I magnet to the side of the spindle mount here. 
so I can turn that on and off as I need it. One of the best things that I did during my reorganization time of this shop is to take my miter saw station and to move it from my old wall over here to the back wall of the shop. And this has been extremely huge because this was an area that I was not really using for anything. It was just for household storage, um, my washer and dryers over here. You know, I kind of had this separated as a basically a household area, but putting the miter saw here has worked out perfect because I don't use it on every project. I don't use it all that often, I guess, really, but I still really like to have this huge open area here where I can break things down um, quickly. It's always set up. I don't need to move anything out. So it's worked out great. Let me walk you through what I got going on here. So up on the top, I just have these storage cabinets that I made a few years ago. These mostly have household items in them. There's a few storage containers where I have some PPE and other things in there, but those are mainly for household storage. Underneath, I have some drawers. And these drawers have just kind of a lot of household junk. Some of these down here have some clamps in them. And this drawer over here has just a bunch of um, user manuals and items like that. So over here to the right of the miter station, I have an old cobalt toolbox. And I've kept this around and it's been useful up here. I just have some bulk sandpaper um, that I've had throughout the years that I've collected here in the bottom and a few other odds and ends, a lot of crafting stuff in here, scissors and, and items like that, that I don't get into too often, but I had this toolbox, I might as well use it. Up at the top, I keep all my chargers, um, batteries, Makita, Milwaukee, and Ryobi batteries, a little speaker up there that I keep on hand. And over here to the left of the miter saw, I have my rigid oscillating sander. And this is another one of these tools that, you know, I just don't really use it often, but I still like to keep around because when I do need it, it's really useful. And I found that this has been a really good spot for it right here because it's out of the way of my cutting when I'm on the miter saw. But if I do need to use it, I just pull it out and it's at a good working eye here. And I could just connect the dust collection from the miter saw into the sander. Speaking of dust collection, beneath the miter saw, I have a Festool CT MIDI dust extractor which is just for the miter saw and every once in a while when I need to use the rigid sander. So I have pretty good capacity with this miter saw station set up. To the left of the blade, I can do about a little bit over eight feet. And to the right of the blade, I can do about seven and a half feet before I hit my CNC. So for me, that's worked out just fine. Shrinking this down and moving it to the back wall has been a big improvement for my workflow. And that's what it's all about. Okay, so last but not least, I think working our way around here is my jointer and my planer combo cart. So switching over to a benchtop jointer has been quite a controversial move for me compared to what I had before. So before for my jointer, I was running a Grizzly G0490X eight inch floor model, helical head jointer with a really long bed, and then the DeWalt 735 planer with straight knives. Now, this was kind of an idea I had uh, a few months ago. In order to save some room in the shop, I still, I had to look at kind of what I had and how much space it was taking up and then what I was actually using it for and how much I was using it for. So although I really, really love the Grizzly jointer that I had, it worked awesome. I just wasn't using it for all of its capabilities. I had these great long beds on it, but I'm only jointing small three foot boards. I'm never really doing an eight foot, seven foot, six foot board on it. So it took up a lot of space for what I was using it for. So I had the idea to step down into this benchtop model from Wahuda, And this is a common benchtop design planer. I went with the Wahuda because this one comes with a cast iron bed that is 10 inches wide. So although I was giving up the long, sturdy beds on my old jointer and the nice quiet motor and the helical head or the spiral cutter head that that had on it, I was gaining 
some width capacity, which is important to me as someone who makes a lot of signs that are in the eight, nine inch width range out of a single board. I was gaining that, but I still had to give up a few other things that I already mentioned. So, so far for me, that's been totally worth it because this planer, or excuse me, this jointer has been really great. It's got good power. It has a carbide insert head. It's not a helical head or a spiral head, even though that's what they call it, but it does have indexable carbide inserts, which is nice because if they get chipped or damaged, you can just turn them three times uh, for you get four uses out of each one of those blades and that's been a big selling point it produces a great finish you know the only drawbacks that i have with this is that it's loud these types of common motors that they put in these things just kind of they just wail they scream so it's a little on the loud end the spiral or excuse me the the carbide in indexable cutter head is is really quiet so that does cut down on a lot of the noise but the motor itself is is pretty is pretty loud um but for me selling my grizzly and putting that money towards this machine plus having some left over was worth it to me because now i have two machines in one footprint so that is why I decided to go with this jointer and we'll talk about the planer next. My new planer is the Grizzly G0940 13 inch helical head planer. And the reason I went with this over my previous planer, the DeWalt 735, was because this had a true spiral cutter head on it rather than my old planer, which has had three straight knives. The DeWalt's a great planer. I really liked it. I thought at the time I would sell that planer, put the money towards this, and I would still have a 13 inch capacity, but now I have a spiral cutter head instead of going ahead and getting like a bird Shelix head for the DeWalt planer. So far, to be honest, it hasn't been a great decision. This planer is okay. It's not as nice as the DeWalt. The worst thing about this planer is the snipe. I've never, I've had a few different planers in my day. I've had a, a Delta, lunchbox planer, the DeWalt 735, and now this. And I have never had a planer that's I've dealt with as much snipe as I have on this thing. I'm getting like four inches on the front piece of the wood and the back piece of the wood on both sides of snipe. So even with adjusting the outfeed tables, uh, the best that I've been able to, it's still pretty bad. Uh, other than that though, it is fine. Um, it's, it's loud, um, but the DeWalt, Planer is also very loud. This one doesn't have the blower for chip ejection, but the dust collection is fine. I will say that the helical head is excellent. It, this produces a really nice finish minus the snipe that I'm getting. So I'm hoping that I can dive into that a little bit more and maybe do some more adjustments with these in-feed and out-feed tables to help with that. For now, I'm cutting off the material or sanding it out. It's not that big of a deal, but in hindsight, I wish I just would have gone ahead and kept my old planer, the DeWalt, and just upgraded to a helical head. I think I would have been more happy with that. Okay, so that's the shop. I appreciate it. Thanks for sweating it out with me. Man, it's been hot in here today. It's been a hot summer afternoon, and this, uh, this place just really cooks, but uh, can't complain. I got a great space. We're making a lot of cool stuff in here, and we continue to hope to make great products out of here. So I appreciate you sticking around. If you like the video, please subscribe. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll be sure to answer those. And thanks a lot. I'll see you on the next one.